Hi. Welcome back to M Hood Fishing. So, quite the gaggle around me today. I'm back on the river, like I said in the last video. I'm surrounded by tons and tons of people. We got Alex here with us today. Why are all these people down here? All right, so it's called the Nurdle Apocalypse. That's what they nicknamed it about, what, two months ago? Yeah. A container fell off a cargo ship up here in the port of New Orleans full of 50 pound bags of nurdles. Now, what are nurdles? All right, we're gonna come down here and show you one. A nurdle is the base of all plastic products. This is what they sell plastic as before production. See these little pellets here? Now they're everywhere. There are some places where it just looks like absolute snow drift. So we have scientists out here today. We have fishermen on one of them, Alex is the other. So why are fishermen out here with scientists doing a nurdle collection? Well, so this isn't just a collecting thing like we are collecting nurdles we're going to try and clean them up but this is a part of a study like a couple of studies now they're looking at the uh help me out here i'm, I'm running out of words you guys they're basically we're trying taking, to quantify the nurdles yeah you know count how many there are per square meter and uh compare our, our estimates with uh, another approach for counting them which is from texas where they count for 10 minutes all right guys we're going to show you more of this as we go through the day but as you can see in the sand we have a square here and they, they have a frame right here out of pvc and they put this down and they see how many nurdles are in that area of the square that's that's in m hood terms you, you had it from science terms and now you have it from m hood terms so we're going to show you more as we go but why why am i here well, I care a lot about the environment, but we're also going to catch fish today and do some dissecting and see if we can find nurdles down in those fish. Sometimes fish do eat these nurdles because they look alike, look a lot like fish eggs. All right, let's get into it, all right? Shoes are getting wet. Whoa, it's a little deeper. So we've got the tide in today. We're gonna walk out here and get my trap, but it's a little higher than it was yesterday because when we got here yesterday, we had rough water, really rough water, and we had low tide. So let's get the phone out of my pocket. Wow, <laughs> this water level is crazy today. I'm like almost up to the planter of peanuts. Whoa, oh man. We've got us an issue here. Here we go, let's see what's in here. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh, my favorite. I got shrimp and I got eel. Isn't that awesome? This is the one that had the faulty clip that I kind of mended with the twisty tie. Oh, I got Unagi in here. Yeah, you're right. I feel like a medieval fisherman right now. Yeah, come check it out, Liz. Look at that, a couple of nice unagis. These are Atlantic eel. Unagi is the Japanese word for eel. We got some freshwater shrimp in here too, like, what, two? Cool, take the fish? Yeah, well, if you guys want to dissect this, that's cool, as long as you leave me the meat. Okay. Liz just told me that there are invasive eels currently being found. Or, yeah, John. I know that this one of these definitely looks like an Atlantic eel, but this one has a different coloration, but I think it's the same. I think the difference between these two is male and female, though females tend to get much bigger than the males. I, ho I think I have that right. It could be the other way around, people, but I believe the females do get much bigger, and these two are about the same. Eel can have different, Atlantic eel anyway, can have different coloration and different water. These, these look definitely like Atlantic eels, but let's get them in the bucket. Bit of bad news, guys. I know you were looking forward to this, but as it turns out, they don't have a permit to dissect eel specifically, only panfish and catfish. And for me, I think these are a little small for the table. I like them a little bigger, but we're just gonna let them go and look at the shrimp we caught. Here we go. There's 
eel number one. Come on, sister, turn around. There you go. We're trying to take a shrimp with you. Yeah, they're just small. They're not fully mature. Here we go, one of those freshwater river shrimps. This one's alive. We'll put that in the bucket and maybe we can fish with that. So I'm working my way to the other trap. I got Kelly with me from UNO. So I, I did tell you that we're running two studies today. One is out of NOO in UNO, and the other one is out of LSU. Oh, look at this. Got a nice fresh looking tennis ball over here for one of those dogs back at the house. There's, let's throw this up here. Up. Oh, this one is stuck too. Oh, we might get the walnuts. Oh, no, we don't have to get the walnuts wet. What do we got in here? Whoa. It's just a few shrimp and a lot of river gold. We've got sand in here. What is, look at the size. Oh, let's get this over to a good place where you can see this. There's a, some really big freshwater shrimp in here. Might be some other things buried in this sand. This is what I wanted to show you. Oh my goodness. Look how long his, uh, his arm is, his claws. Look at that. He's trying to do me in right here. I'm trying to take my thumb. This is like the biggest freshwater shrimp I've seen all year. I've seen in probably a good while. You guys see the size of that? It's like th as thick as one of my fingers. Check that out. It's pretty thick. You could eat that if you let go of my thumb. This is Bennett. He brought a cast net down here. He's brave. I thought about bringing mine, but it's so there's so much here. I just didn't want to deal with snagging it left and right. But he's kidding some interesting things over here. Let's see what he gets in this net. There, oh, he's got you got something in there. He's also got stuff in a bucket. Let's see what this is. It's a shad. Look at that. It's got some other things we'll show you in a second. Here's the bucket of stuff that Bennett has caught previously. All right, so the most interesting thing in here is this. This is a small white bass. These are gonna get euthanized because they're, they're on the permit. We've got this one's already going out. Shad will do that. And I think there might be a fat head in here too. There's a small, that's a, is it a channel cat that you got there? Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Where's that? I thought I saw a fat head in here. Maybe I'm imagining things. Finally getting a line wet. It's not too deep where I'm at, so that's why I'm waiting out. Other times it's not that safe to do what I'm doing. So the first thing I wanna do is drop shot a bit of red wiggler with a size six Aberdeen, only using one sixteenth ounce teardrop weight. Looking for panfish or other things. We are gonna move on to other species. For the most part, most of my fish I'm catching today is gonna to go into the uh, study. If I'm gonna hang out in such a peculiar spot, I better keep my shoes tied, eh? So what we're doing right now is we're putting this bait at the base of pylons as I can, because we should see, oh, look at this. I better get this shoe tied, we're getting a bite. At the, each, at the base of each pylon, you should find a bowl the current is gonna form. And fish, catfish specifically, like to get down in those bowls. That was probably a small channel cat we were getting a bite from there. What a crazy sight we have in front of me. Look at this old rotten wood up here. It's all weathered by the weather. What are these? Look like uh, conductors up there. Something. Maybe those are just, I don't know. It's cool looking. So we're over here where there was a fire at one time. So there's not much above us. We're going to look at these pylons. Put this bait down in the bowl. 
All right, guys, Alex and I are about to change locations to produce some better fish because up under here, we just have micro cats, but we will take a look at a few other things under here before we move outside of here. Here we got Dr. Liz and Dr. Mark up in this wash. And we call this a wash because this is where water drains from when it rains back into the river and it makes these like ditches here. The washes are where the nurdles are getting just piled up like crazy, like snow drifts. As you can see down here, we've got just tons of them. Let me get a handful here for you. These uh, washes just act like crazy catchments for these nurdles. Look at that, looks like rock salt. It's not rock salt, don't put it on your food. I wish it was. Yeah. Watch this guys, there's some kite string or some kind of string through here. Look at that. Rocky, rocky. As I thought, we had to give up on fishing under the wharf. It was just a bunch of micro cats under there, but very interesting always to be under there. So we're at the spot where I was yesterday. Alex is trying his hand at drop shotting a night crawler like I did yesterday. I'm gonna come over here with the uh, ultralight and the red wiggler, see if I can get some pan fish. Yes. Oh. Second. Yeah. First fish on the line today. Can you believe that? It's been a really poor day for fishing, but an interesting day nonetheless. And I tell you what, this is actually the first Rio Grande cichlid that I've ever caught in the Mississippi River, as far as I can remember. So yeah, you're right. All right, guys, we've been out here a good while now. Sometimes a spot is really good one day and not so good the next. It wasn't that great yesterday, but it was far better yesterday than it was today. There were a lot of different things going on yesterday. Even though the fishing was a bit poor today, it was a really fun day for Alex and I both to hang out with all the people that showed up for the, uh, the two studies that were running side by side today. And, you know, people wanted to hang out with me. We did put some, some fish in their bucket to, uh, to dissect. Catching those eels in the minnow traps was really, really awesome. So I'm really tired at this point, and so is Alex. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.